It's my distinct pleasure to be able to introduce Maxine Harper of Greenwood, class of 1974, as our recipient of the 2009 Alumnus of the Year Award. When a senior at Pillow, at Pillow Maxine was selected for the Pillow Academy Hall of Fame. The entry in the 1974 Mustang Memories reads, Once in a great while, a person comes along who influences the lives of everyone she meets. Maxine Harper is definitely this kind of person. Besides being a person of strong character, she has won many academic awards. Maxine was a member of the Latin Club, Science Club, and Honor Club. Her academic excellence was exhibited when she was awarded valedictorian in the 1974 graduating class. Maxine Harper is certainly most deserving of the membership into the 1974 Hall of Fame. After leaving Pillow, Maxine continued on her path to success. She enrolled in Delta State University, where she received her BS in education and special education in 1978. From DSU, she went to Mississippi State University and earned her master's in education and special education in 1979. Next came her doctor's in education in curriculum and supervision from DSU in 1987. Dr. Harper worked as a special education teacher in the Lafleur County Schools for Handicapped Children, Greenwood Public Schools from 1980 until 1987. She then worked as a computer programmer and educational specialist from 1987 to 1997 for Microsoft Computer Consultants. Next, she became president and director of product development of Software Solutions Incorporated in Greenwood from 1997 to 2000. In 2000, Dr. Harper began working in various capacities at the University of Mississippi. She began as a research analyst in the Center for Educational Research and Evaluation, but she has since, but set, and served since then as an adjunct professor uh, and associate director of the Center for Educational Research and Evaluation, and presently serves as a clinical assistant professor and interim director of the Center for Educational Research and Evaluation. I'm sure I messed up some of those names there. <laughs> Maxine has been successful in obtaining a number of major grants and has received many professional honors and awards at Ole Miss, including Outstanding Grant Writer and Outstanding Researcher. In 2008, she was named University of the Ole Miss's College of Education Alumna of the Year. Dr. Harper has published numerous articles in scholarly journals. In addition, she authored and self-published Daffodils in the Snow, a weekly Bible study devotional in 1996. Her most recent book, in which we've seen her in the paper and in many publications recently, is Her Journey of Hope, which was released in June. In this autobiography, Maxine shares her struggles and triumphs as she climbed the educational ladder. As an individual with quadri quadriplegic cerebral palsy, Dr. Maxine Harper's story is a must-read, inspirational account of her walk through the seasons of life, from her early childhood to her present career. At this time, I'd like to uh, have Maxine come forward and present her with the Alumnus of the Year Award. And Emmy Harper Stone is going to say a few words for Maxine. Just one correction. These are Maxine's words, not mine. Let me begin by saying that it is an honor simply to be a graduate of Pillow Academy. To be chosen as Pillow's alumnus of the year is an honor beyond words. In 1970, I was preparing to enter high school, but my circumstances were a little different from those of other high school freshmen. During my childhood, my physical disability had limited where I could go to school. At age 15, I had attended what could be considered regular schools for only three years. Looking toward high school, I longed for some assurance that I could continue to go to school with the young people who had become my very dear friends. Then, something incredible happened. The late Miss Lucas, who was at that time on the board of directors of Pillow Academy, called my parents and invited, yes, invited me to enroll at Pillow. Joy of joys. Pillow was a college prep school. My sister Wanda, our cousin Lisa, and lots of our friends were going to enroll there. And now, Miss Lucas was saying, we want Maxine to come to Pillow. It felt so good to be wanted. And here 
Almost 30 years later, high school memories come flooding back. Miss Walker's Latin class, Mr. Aiden writing algebra equations on the board, Coach Crow showing us how to dissect a frog, <laughs> Mr. Davis telling us war stories, <laughs> Miss Loggins saying, Write your book report like a New York Times book review. I can still hear the band striking up the fight song. And I can still see Dr. Lucas walking the sidelines at football games. I was a part of all of that. Can you believe it? It didn't matter to the teachers or to the other students that I couldn't walk. I couldn't use my hands very well or speak fluently. These unforgettable people became my legs, my hands, my voice, wheeling my chair and rolling my typewriter from class to class, turning pages in my books taking the time to listen to my broken speech. They allowed me the privilege of being a part of Pillow Academy. The years flew by. All of a sudden, it's 1974, and I was a senior. And on a hot day in May, my mother was loading me into the van Ms. Browning, the secretary, came running out to tell my mother that Mr. Carruthers, the headmaster, needed to see her. After what seemed like an eternity, they returned. My mother and Ms. Browning had tears in their eyes, but Mr. Carruthers had a huge grin across his face. He flung open the doors of my van and said, Lady, we've just finished averaging grades, and you are our valedictorian. I must have told this story dozens of times, and each time I feel that same, that incredible joy I felt when I first heard those words. You see, for me, it meant then, and it means now, not that I had won some competition, for our class of 74 was filled with students equally deserving of recognition. No, to me, being valedictorian meant that I had a future. I could play and I could succeed in that game called life, no matter that the physical odds were stacked high against me. I owe a huge debt of gratitude to Pillow Academy for the superior education I received there. With that education as my foundation, I was able to earn a doctorate degree, and at Ole Miss, I teach future teachers as well as direct a research center. And I say that with pride Pride in Pillow Academy, pride that its teachers, its administrators saw potential in me and in all of its students, helping us to become the best that we can be. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for the privilege of being a student at Pillow Academy. And I thank you for this honor. It was bad enough to follow Dr. Lucas, but man. <laughs>